Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dirt. Yeah, I pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me your po-po, po-po. He is Jalen Rose. What up, Dow? I am David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in, center stage on the mic, and we're putting it on wax. wax. What do we do? Giving a fine individual that supported this program for at least six years exactly what they want when they desire. The only people that have supported this program for six years are the people listening to the podcast. And now that we've completely sold out and gone to ESPN two at two, only for four weeks though. They didn't. They didn't say, "Oh, you guys are on ESPN two at two now." They're like, you guys are on ESPN two at two for this amount of time. So when we pull the plug on you, it won't be a surprise. But we will always, always give our podcast listeners something exclusive. So if you subscribe to this podcast, don't think you're just getting repurposed TV show because we will always make exclusive content just for you. So, and we'll do some things that we can't necessarily do on the television show. For example. We're going to take a deep dive into what the Timberwolves did this offseason right now. We all know the headline. They got Jimmy Butler and the number 16 pick for Zach Levine, Chris Dunn, and the 7 pick. Butler has two years left on his deal. It's about $40 million, $20 million a year. We know that Butler played for Thibodeau in Chicago. But when it was announced that Thibodeau was going to Minnesota, you said years ago, literally not years ago, a year ago, you said they're going to trade for Jimmy Butler. But then you followed up and said what? Do you remember? The Bulls wouldn't do Tibbs that favor. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that they would find a way to allow Tibbs to fleece them of their all-star caliber player. The relationship between the Bulls and Tibbs was a little frosty at the end there. So you would imagine that of all the teams that they would be working a trade with, they would not be the Timberwolves. But they, the Bulls looked in the mirror and said, you know what we're going to do? We're not going to go up. We're going to go down. But this is a chess move because when you work for a team as long as Tibbs worked in Chicago, you kind of know what they like. He knows how they tick. And you know what makes them tick. And he was like, oh, okay, we'll draft Chris Dunn. He didn't start for them last year. Ricky nope. Rubio was their starting mm-hmm. point guard. Oh, Zach Levine, an athletic shooting guard that plays on a wing, was a 20-point scorer in Minnesota. And, and we hang out a lot, a lot off wax, and we watch a lot of NBA basketball. And you've got certain guys around the league that you just picked as Jalen Rose guys. Avery Bradley is one. KCP is one. And Zach Levine is one of those. You were in early on Zach Levine. Why, are you, why do you have this little thing for Zach Levine? Because he's the kind of player that once he's able to play through contact, and for those that like don't play a lot of basketball, what that means is like he's so explosive as an athlete that when you see him dunking, a lot of times it's not on somebody. No. He's and, not that kind of player. And so I saw him in college – and I was following the fact that he can handle, he can shoot with range, mm-hmm. he has toughness. I'm like, once he gets a little bit stronger and gets a little meaner, it's going to be over for the league. And I saw flashes of that in Minnesota last year. Got hurt. They were the, I think, only the second team to have three players average 20 plus points. Hmm. That Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns, and Levine. And I think coming off of his injury, continuing to grow into his body, continuing to play through contact, you're going to see him not only getting buckets, but just nasty finishes over opponents. And if you think about that, they had Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns, and Zach Levine all getting 20 plus points, all basically averaging points per game their age. Like all those guys are young. And I think Tibbs said, I love this young core, but young core is not going to take us where we need to be in the Western Conference. So he. Leveled up. He traded them. He traded Levine and Dunn in the number seven pick for Jimmy Butler. But he wasn't done then. We're not done. He said, we're not done. You know who else I like to play for me? Taj Gibson. Fort Greene's own Taj Gibson. So he got Fort Greene's Taj Gibson to play for them. They signed him to a two-year deal for $28 million. They also signed Jeff Teague to a three-year deal for $57 million. And this one I loved. Jamal Crawford. 
a two year deal. J crossover for just eight point nine million dollars. Seems like they got a good. That's wink, wink. And there is a player option in the second year. There you go. So if things go well, it feels like he opts out and they pay him more. That's what it seems like to me. Wink, wink. Or he says, you know what? I'll play for you guys for one year. I'll showcase what I can do. And then I'll opt out and I'll have somebody else pay me more. But something tells me he will not be getting paid $4.5 million next year. Jamal Crawford will be coming off the bench, crossing people up and scoring 14 points a game in the year 2037. This is what people have to pay attention to. You're going to look at the all-time... NBA scoring list in like six or seven years, and you're gonna see like all of these Hall of Fame all time great players. Mm-hmm. You're like Jamal Crawford, and the, Jamal the top Crawford's ten to score. Like, wait, what happened? It's just longevity, and his game doesn't change as he gets older. He's still as quick as he used to be. Yep. Not the same for you, Jalen. Nope. Ricky Rubio, he's gone. Omar Caspi's gone. Shabazz Muhammad's gone. Adrian Payne's gone. Jordan Hill's gone. Brandon Rush is gone. A They're lot of players. Agents. They might sign a couple one without or two of those back. playoff experience. Mm-hmm. And again, it's no accident what Tibbs did. He went after known commodities. You know what you're getting from Jimmy Butler and Taj Gibson because you coached them. Mm-hmm. You know what you're getting from Jamal Crawford because he's going to get buckets. Teague's going to give you quickness. He was on a 60 win team a couple of years ago in Atlanta. Still a starting caliber point guard in the game. So. I appreciate them adding to their roster to go with Carl Anthony Towns, who has unlimited potential, and Wiggins, who continues to improve. I think they now have what it takes to officially cement themselves as not only a legitimate playoff team, but a team that could possibly advance if they continue to improve. If they're in the playoffs, who could be out of the playoffs? Looks like I'm looking at the uh, Blazers. That could be a possibility. You know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It'll become clear. It'll become clear as we get closer to the season. So that's the Timberwolves. And there's also this from Woj. Yesterday we heard that LeBron James was upset at the Cavs because they had a deal for Jimmy Butler on the table. And now Woj is saying that before David Griffin was gone, they also had a deal on the table for Paul George. See, I don't like these. This happens all the time to the Celtics especially. Yeah, I, I, They're like, I, we had a deal, we were about to do this deal. Here's the thing. There are 10 teams can say that. They almost had a deal for Paul George. Yes, we all, they we had were, conversations for Jimmy yeah, Butler. Exactly. The, or Carmelo was talking. Yeah. General managers, presidents, team executives, guess what they do all day? Talk to each other about basketball players. And moving players. All day, every single day. So I don't like these hindsight as 2020. Oh, if they would have not gotten rid of Griffin, that don't mean that they would have got Butler. It don't mean that they would have got Paul feels George. Like, it feels like they're no. managing the message through the media. They're, it feels like there are players and agents that are saying the Cavaliers did not re-up Griffin because he was going to trade Kevin Love. That's what it feels like the, the we're being sold as the media and the fans, right? Game is to be sold, not told. And then there's this. Reports are that Ryan Anderson's contract is what's keeping Carmelo from joining the Rockets. Because if you are going to bring in Carmelo, you need to free up enough space to pay Carmelo his salary. Ryan Anderson is one of those big contracts that the Rockets have that they're trying to get rid of in order to bring in Carmelo. But... The Knicks don't want Ryan Anderson. The Knicks are in the we want young players business. The Knicks are in the we are rebuilding. We do not want old Ryan Anderson overpaid Ryan Anderson. So they're trying to bring in a third team. You know how complicated that can be. How does Carmelo find his way to the Rockets? Patience. Hmm. That's clearly what it's going to take. He has a no trade clause along with LeBron, along with Dirk. So ultimately, if he wants to get his contract for the next couple of years, He either has to show up in a New York Knickerbocker uniform or find a way to agree to a trade. And if he's decided that he only wants to go to Houston or Cleveland... Which is what he reportedly decided. It's not happening today. It's not happening tomorrow. Him and Kyrie look good running together in UCLA in the summer. But it ain't going to happen in NBA uniform until a couple of those dominoes, as you mentioned, fall. Here's one of the things about this which I find interesting. The Knicks... 
don't have leverage in this. Because the Rockets are fine. We've got CB3, we've got James Harden, we've got Ryan Anderson, we've got Nene, we've got Trevor Reza, we got Clint Capella. Like, we're going to be fine. We're, we're going to be fine. Nene is my guy. But don't just throw his name I, out there like it's Anthony Davis love, or Carl Anthony that's, that's Towns. They're probably going to start him over Capella. He went 12 for 12 in a game in the playoffs. I like Nene. I do too. He's my gray-haired brother. <laughs> But the Rockets, the Rockets are happy to start the season with their current roster. The Knicks, not so much. The Knicks, not so much. The Knicks aren't happy with Carmelo being there. Carmelo's not happy being there. Carmelo found himself in two very difficult situations right now, both in his professional and his personal life. Let's just leave it at that. And finally, as we wrap up this podcast exclusive content, we will always give the podcast exclusive content. How do you feel about the new time slot? I love it. I want to keep it. I do too. My only concern is that one of the things about being on late night is you knew all the executives were sleeping. Because executives, important <laughs> executives, they're morning people. They wake up at 4.30 and work out and you know, and start doing emails. And they've got conference calls and things all day. Like They're definitely not watching us at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. But at 2 p.m., executives can see our show. We're going Debo. We're not getting off this time slot. You going to talk to Paul Feinbaum? Sure. He's who's taking our time slot. If something bad happens to Paul Feinbaum, just trust me, Jalen Rose did it. <laughs> if anything bad happens to Paul Feinbaum in the next three weeks, and I like Paul Feinbaum. This show is entertaining. It's a very entertaining broadcaster. But if something bad happens to Paul Feinbaum, you know Jalen Rose has something to do with it. If he gets the flu, <laughs> if he gets in a car accident, if something happens, he loses his voice, you know it was Jalen Rose's fault. We're going to give the people what they want to our podcast listeners. We love you. We respect you. We will never, ever leave you without a dope pod to step to. Kyrie Irving was at the fashionable 50 party for Sports Illustrated. He seemed very happy to be there. Didn't seem too happy about what's going on with his team. Let's listen. You know, I understand we're in a, a very peculiar place. We just have to, you know, make sure that all our pieces are aligned first. And, um, you know, then we go from there. This is summertime. A lot of craziness going on in the NBA. So, you know, best to just observe and then see what happens. But obviously, there are some things that I'm pretty sure our organization wants to do. And uh, we'll go from there. A peculiar place. Jalen Rose, take us behind the curtain. What does Kyrie Irving really mean? Breaking news for LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and every supporter of the Cleveland Cavaliers. On paper, you're not going to always be the best team. Mm-mm. What? They're definitely not the best team on paper. You signed Kyle Korver. LeBron James is still on the roster. You didn't make any drastic changes to your core group. Don't disrespect Jose Calderon like that, Jalen Rose. I played with Jose Calderon his rookie season. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's not a breaking news. But, however, you're still the favorites in the East. Are you? Yes. The number one seed in the East last year got better in the offseason. The Cleveland Cavaliers did not get better, and they also have a gigantic hole in what used to be the front office. Just like the Boston Celtics still have a hole up front that they hope to fill one day, possibly with somebody really productive like a DeMarcus Cousins in their dreams. But with that being said, LeBron James has owned the Eastern Conference. It's a rite of passage that as long as he's on your roster, you have a chance to make it to the NBA Finals. And the way he and Kyrie Irving have performed the last couple of years in the Finals have been terrific, outstanding, fantastic. The problem is Kevin Love hasn't showed up against the Warriors. No. If you are on the Cleveland Cavaliers, you can almost hear in Kyrie Irving's voice as he speaks that they're not that happy with what's happening. There's been reports from USA Today that LeBron isn't happy. And he said we're in a peculiar place. That's not positive. A peculiar place is not a positive thing. It's like, oh, we're in a peculiar place. We might go undefeated this year. It's like, yeah, we've got problems. Oh, I'm sure there's some things the organization wants to do. That's what he said. Do you know what they want to do? Fill the front office positions. Maybe get, maybe trade Kevin Love and get a better roster. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon. We stress success being predicated off of realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. What do you expect is the ceiling for the Cleveland Cavaliers? They could win the championship, right? They could win the championship. They're championship contenders. However, long term, if you're Kyrie Irving, you're into this contract. Even if they win the championship, I still see LeBron James leaving. Don't you? I do. But, again, he didn't sign a lifetime contract. No. He, he delivered a, on his like, promise. He's going to start doing 10 days now. He's, gonna be like, I'm gonna, <laughs> he's just going to start doing 10 days. Everybody goes, no, 10-day contract, 10-day contract, 10-day contract. And what has happened also is LeBron has basically acknowledged 
through his behavior that he's only going to play on super teams. Yeah. Oh, he, that means, and so that's now when we look at their roster, it's like, oh, feel bad for the Cavs. Let, what, they're the only team besides the Warriors to have at least three All-Stars last year. That's fair. I guess I don't feel so bad for the Cavs. I do feel a little bit bad for the Clippers. However, I also feel bad for Chris Paul because when Doc Rivers was having this press conference and talking about the new Clippers, here's what he had to say about the new Clippers. Well, that ball movement, you know. Uh, that's one of the things, for the most part, that I've always preached, you know. Uh, with, with Chris's skill, you wanted to take advantage of what he could do, and that, you know, he was a ball, a guy that needed the ball to make plays, and he did it so well, you kind of changed to do that. Uh, but if you look at my work, uh, historically, it's been more of a ball movement uh, cut basketball team, and that's what we're going to get back to do. Shot, shot, I love shot, it. I love everybody. We, I love backhanded compliments. He's just like, look, Chris is just such a great player, and he's so well when he has the ball in his hands. But if you look at what I want to do, he's been holding me back and this organization back, which is why he was traded. And also, it's like, if you look at my work. Yes, if you look you at know, my work. Like, he's got this great body. You've won one chip with the Celtics, right, okay? Exactly. Like Michelangelo yeah. or something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you look at my work, my vast, my vast museum of great work that I've got. And the Celtics, their primary ball handler when they won the championship was... Uh, it was defense. That's and what it was. Rajon Rondo. Rajon Rondo, who's okay. running the team. But it was Tom Thibodeau in his defense, which, which deserves a lot of credit for that championship. Not taking anything away from Doc. You win a chip, you got a chip. That's fine. But I just really think that this is a direct shot at Chris Paul, don't you? It is, because he used another term. What I preached. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is what I expected, but he was so very good at doing it his way. I had to acquiesce and allow exactly. him to cook. Exactly. It wasn't really how I That's wanted it. That's not what I it. wanted to do. It didn't have the seasoning mm. and the herbs and spices no. the way I would have chosen. Because if we'd have done it my way, oh, we would have won three my work, we'd have won three oh, yeah. championships. I mean, come on, we'd, you know? we'd be a dynasty exactly. by now if we did it my way. No That's how it works. This reminds me of like the dude that gets broken up with. You know what I mean? And they start complaining. Oh, you know what? I never liked the way that she cooked anyway. <laughs> you know what? She was that. She wasn't that good. I didn't like her anyway. That's what it sounds like. It's like, dude, Chris Paul broke up with you. Okay, the, let's not start let's turning around like that's a positive thing. But I do like them adding Danilo Gallinari. But what I would like to see is how's Doc going to wear his hair this year? Doc has hair. How's how's he going to rock it? <laughs> I mean, his hair is is the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> we need to do a thirty for thirty on it. We need to do an investigation. We need to get Bob Lee on that. So, do you have Bob Lee's email? I do. Let's get Bob, let's get outside the lines, Bob Lee, and do like a serious E60 style package on Doc's hair. See because, if he'll get his cooperation. Because if it wasn't for Chris Paul holding the ball, he would still have all of his hair, <laughs> and his voice wouldn't be hoarse. It's all CP3's fault. And then we get this from also from Los Angeles, another organizational leader, a gentleman by the name of Irving Magic. Johnson. Hall of Fame mogul. Here's what he had to say about trading D'Angelo Russell. Quote, when I say bye, that's it. I keep moving. I can't get caught in emotions and all that. That's not who I am. We moved and we kept moving. Boss move from the boss of the Lakers. Is this the right approach for a front office executive? It's the right approach, but I must say this. We can't act like he just traded Steph Curry. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah. You know, like, like, it's like we move. Pump the brakes a little bit. You know what I mean? D'Angelo Russell was a high draft pick. Mm -hmm. He showed some promise. And mm -hmm. I know he put himself in an awkward spot with the way he handled the social media thing with Nick sure. Young. Sure. But I want to hit the brakes on him taking too much criticism. Because if you look at his statistics, for a young guard, he's shown that he could be a productive player. And so for the Nets who gotten fleeced for their draft picks over the next handful of years it seems like you do take a flyer on him and i'm going to say this right now he's going to put in work for the next yes, and the thing is about magic johnson with the the dirty secret is that this isn't about trading d'angelo russell this is about trading timothy mozgov and his disgusting Correct. contract that was signed at midnight from the previous administration yes like that's what this is really about but i just love i just love like there's no emotions in this. I feel, <laughs> I feel nothing. We moved and we kept moving. But that's a side of magic that gets lost when you see the amazing personality that mm -hmm. he has. And the big, the big smile. warm yeah. smile. Yeah. You don't know that he's a cutthroat killer. I when love, you have to be. to be to be as successful as he is. Absolutely. Look over my left shoulder. That doesn't look like a cutthroat killer. That looks like a dude kissing another dude in the cheek. <laughs> Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. 
It's a creative twist on a Belgian style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. There's a lot that gets discussed in the sports world, especially in the world of pop culture. And we have a segment where we just kind of filter it all through the Jalen Rose filter. <laughs> if the topic is worthy of discussion, Jalen Rose will say hit the brakes. If the topic is not worthy of discussion, Jalen Rose will say keep it moving. We be moving no, 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 keep it move. <laughs> First up. Woj is reporting that the Blazers tried to trade for Carmelo Anthony. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Tried. Keep it moving. Okay. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> Tony Romo's golf game keep it is moving. off. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> Floyd has a quote about the rumor that Conor McGregor got knocked out during training. Hit the brakes. <laughs> Thought you that one get you. Floyd said, quote, if I ain't seen no footage, I don't believe it. Everything is rumors until I see it. I have to officially see it with my own eyes. What do you think about Floyd's response? A longtime professional. He's been in the ring 49 times. He's undefeated. He's not going to underestimate his opponent. And what gets lost about Floyd a lot of times, because he has a big personality and he's really flashy and he's brash about his comments, and he's really disciplined in that ring. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be so tough for Conor McGregor to hit. It's, it's going to be like the enthusiasm is going to happen between now and when the fight starts. I just love the idea that people are taking the, that Conor McGregor got knocked out in training. Like That has any bearing on his performance in the fight. Like, <laughs> no, whether he got knocked out or whether he's knocking everybody out, the fight is still going to be the same. It's going to be him getting frustrated, chasing Floyd around, Floyd not throwing that many punches until the third round, and then absolutely dominant, dominating him. And also, if the guy that I'm fighting... Is getting knocked out in training. You messing with my money, dog. <laughs> yeah, for real. Come on. I don't want to hear those don't rumors. Don't train too hard. Yes. Yeah, he yes. needs to text Connor right now and be like, listen, <laughs> don't train too hard, Connor. Don't mess up this fight. Don't get injured. All right. Next. Chris Christie caught a foul ball at a Mets game. Hold on. This dude. Keep him moving or hit the brakes. <laughs> hit the brakes. Okay. Hit him again. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. First and foremost, I saw footage of this gentleman. It's the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. You're the governor of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And the business goes awry to the point where the beaches are closed. Got to shut down all the beaches. You have the nerve, the audacity to have yourself, along with family members, on the beach. Soft move. Are you kidding me? You know, and the thing is, we all saw the picture from the helicopter that caught him. And he's got this look on his face like, oh, wait a second. That helicopter have a photographer in it? Like, he, he, you can tell he got caught. He did not want anyone to see that. And then he had the nerve to say, I wasn't getting a tan. <laughs> of course you weren't getting a tan. You, when you've got Chris Christie's body, you it, wear a shirt to the beach. Correct. Yeah, yeah. You, wear, you wear a shirt to the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it moving. <laughs> Hater is a new dating app that matches people on what they dislike. Keep moving or hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Ooh, I like this one, too. They made a map showing each state's most hated topic, like Virginia hates dabbing pizza grease with a napkin. Massachusetts hates Eli Manning. So what it does is if, if the things that you dislike match up, then you can go on a date. I think having things in common that you hate on could be more helpful early in a relationship than having things in common that you both love. I disagree. Never embrace the negative. Oh, I, that, but you know me. That's what I do. Correct. That's why I'm here. This is why we're having this conversation. I always embrace the negative. I love the negative. I take the negative and it feeds me like Darth Vader. Do you know who that is? He's from Star Wars. Let's move on. Embrace the negative. <laughs> embrace the negative. No. You get a lot further if we're talking about things we have in common than the things we dislike. You know what I'm surprised? I'm surprised Hater isn't taken already as a name for an app. Huge mistake. Keeping it moving. Tony Romo has... Keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> Joel Embiid, Kyrie Irving, and others are very upset about their 2K player ratings. Hit the brakes. Embiid thought he should have been a 95. There's only one player in the NBA that's higher than a 95. And that's LeBron James. The only person I've seen that seems happy with their rating is Carl Anthony Towns. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm good. Like, <laughs> he's like, I'm good. This is why I play NBA Live. You play NBA Live because you're the voice of NBA Live. Correct. Okay. <laughs> okay I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear. <laughs> I just want to be clear. 
If they did ratings for media members, every single media member would be upset about it. If they did ratings for accountants, every single account or accountant would be upset about it. No one except for Colin Anthony Towns is happy about this. And probably LeBron James is in 96. He's like, I'm good. But also, this is why you play the game. Like, if everybody's rating is so high, then it's no fun to actually compete. Let's keep it moving. Kirk Cousins said he needed more time. We will not force football topics on this program. Please keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. He can pay it in a franchise tax. Ice Cube was asked if Terrell Owens could join the big three. Do you want to know what he said? Hit the brakes. Okay. That's just because I teased that one. I know what he said. He said that the big three is only for NBA players. See, I think he made a mistake here. He should say only for professional basketball players because there are a lot of players that didn't play in the NBA that play overseas that you know that cash checks to play basketball that are more than worthy to be in this league. Yeah, but he didn't say anything about former NFL players. Nope, and no, that's where they were talking about. No, he didn't. So he had to make a distinction. It's almost like when you come to the to our show or you go to the club. There's a VIP list. <laughs> There's a velvet rope, and we love you, T.O. You can come support the product. We'll LLs we'll over free there. tickets, whatever you need. All yeah. the support. But you not be getting on this court. You're not getting a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting a uniform. All right? That's all. Has the Big Three contacted you about playing? I knew about the Big Three before 98% of the people you see actually performing. Mm-hmm. Because Roger Mason's a really good friend of mine. As well as Ice Cube, clearly. And on a lot of different levels, they asked me to participate. I just didn't have... The time to commit over the summer, one. Two, my game is over. It's really over. And three, it's like, I'd much rather go and watch them play and enjoy it as a fan than to have to compete and get elbowed in the face and get pushed down. Jalen, I know what it was. You had to go on vacation. That's all it was. <laughs> is the finals were over. You had to get you had to get the passport out. You, had to, you were like, oh, look, look, um, O'Shea, look, I really appreciate the invite, but I got I got to get on this plane. And it's hard to here. tell Cube, no, that's family. It can't be that hard. Julian Edelman's high school teacher sent him a letter of apology. Keep Hit moving the brakes on this. Oh, oh, okay. Here's what I want. Huh. Here's what I want to tell everybody that's become something in life. Well, let me let me let me just let me finish the sentence. Okay. Cool. His high school teacher sent him a letter because he's apologizing because when he was in high school, he told Edelman that he should set realistic goals. Obviously, Edelman exceeded even the most conservative of goals. But here's what I want people to understand. First and foremost, everybody's not rooting for your success. No, not me. I don't want anyone to be successful. Two, your critics, sometimes they're right. Ooh, that hurt my And lastly, they fuel you. So you can't have it both ways. On one side, people are like, I don't care what people say or think. Mm -hmm. Then on the other half, it's like, oh, people doubting me. That's why I play with a chip on my shoulder. Correct. Exactly. It's like, it can't be both ways. It (laughs) it really can't be both ways. Oh, I never check my response. I I never read what anybody says about me. And then, like, that same person will turn around and be like, oh, it fuels me. All that negativity just fuels me. I channel it. As long as you're winning, the journey was worth it. (laughs) Lastly, 50 Cent. Reportedly has sold effing vodka for sixty million dollars. When you said sold, I thought you was about to say Michael Vick. I'm sorry, go ahead. No. Fifty Cent sold effing vodka for sixty million dollars. Keep moving or hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. I'm surprised you want to hit the brakes on this because when it I, cause it has nothing to do with power, which is like the only thing you care <laughs> That's about. That's what I was about to go. No, like you care That's more I was about, about the power go. than you do the NBA. Correct. You really do. If you took any of the energy that you spend in analyzing and discussing power and just allocated that to analyzing and discussing the world of sports, this show would be much more popular. That's why I wanted to hit the brakes, only to do a public service announcement for power and for fit. Are they paying you? You have to come on our program Is the show and that break good? down this season. You have to Is start the show watching that good? it. You're Tommy. I don't want to watch it. I'm spending my Sunday nights watching game of Thrones and only Game of Thrones. I'll watch Game of Thrones three times before I watch Power once. You're missing it. There's a strong divide between us. You don't a make, strong divide. So, between so you us. get on me about movie plots. You don't even know who Ghost is. I don't want to know who Ghostface. Ghostface Killer is the only ghost I need in my life. <laughs> Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. 
Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Jalen Rose, Ben Simmons has only tweeted 115 times. What? Yesterday, he tweeted at LeBron James with no words, just two googly eyes. What was he doing there? Let me see. Um, isn't Ben Simmons represented by Clutch Sports? And Rich Paul, which is part of the LeBron James Consortium. You mean to tell me that LeBron James, for anybody that's going to run with this news today. Mm -hmm, like us. Would leave the Cleveland Cavaliers and consider joining the Philadelphia no, 76ers? No, 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 no. Not no, be able here's what I think to really happened. Do it. Here's what I think really happened. Because you know what? Like there is a sort of like a teacher student thing going on with LeBron James and Ben Simmons. Not that he's gonna, you know, Ben Ben Simmons is gonna grow up and be LeBron James, but they've got similar body types, passing first players, really good feel for the game. And I think that's one of the reasons he signed with Clutch Sports. LeBron and Ben were sitting next to each other. And LeBron's like, here's one thing you gotta learn. You can just tweet stuff and the media will run with it. He's like, watch this. He's like, watch this. Take out your phone right now. Take out your phone right now. Tweet at me and googly eyes and just watch what happens. They'll be talking about it on ESPN all day long. And he's like, just, just learn from me on this. Because LeBron James is the master of the subtweet. He's the master of the vague phrase that might mean that he hates Kyrie Irving, but we don't really know. Like, he's mastered that. And he's just teaching Ben Simmons the ways of being an NBA athlete and confusing the media on Twitter. I appreciate the progress that Philadelphia has made mm -hmm. when they talk about trusting the process. But you got to also pay attention to this. Joel Embiid, while he played at an all-star level and shows terrific potential, can make the three, turn over both shoulders, a defensive stalwart, especially at the hoop. His health is always going to be an That's issue. That's what Ben Simmons meant. He's like, look at this. All of our guys are healthy. Yeah. Ben Simmons... Has he played an NBA game yet? Not a single NBA game. Okay, um, and they just had the number one pick, Fultz, and he clearly hasn't played in the game yet. No, he hasn't. And you know what all three of those guys have in common? None of them played in the NCAA tournament either. So I appreciate what they've done in signing J.J. Redick. <laughs> but look at a team like Minnesota. They had Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns, and they still needed to go out and get a player like Jimmy Butler to, just to validate the just to make the playoffs what they've gotten accomplished. So while they've made so many strides, they still have a long way to go. But the caveat, they play in the East. TMZ has a video of Conor McGregor fans just surrounding Floyd Mayweather's car. Just, he can't go anywhere. He's driving like one mile an hour. They don't want to run people over. Everyone's got their phones out, just causing this frenzy all over the car. And then, as the bodyguards kind of have to get out of the car to clear a path for the car to go through, it's a crazy scene. One of the bodyguards gets hit by Floyd's car. It looks like he gets hit by Floyd's car. <laughs> and then he gets, goes to go to the ground. He's got to pick up all of his stuff and collect it. If you were that bodyguard, would you feel a certain way about getting hit by Floyd's car? I would not feel a certain type of way because there was a raucous atmosphere happening. Mm -hmm. You had to get out and make sure you cleared the path so the vehicle could drive through. Floyd wasn't the person behind the wheel. No. The car clearly wasn't going at a high rate of speed. But enough to knock this dude over. He's like 350 pounds. No. What you do, though, I mean, you got to make sure you play it now. You got to fall down yeah. and let everybody know you got hit <laughs> now. At the workplace. Just Who knows? in case. Who knows? You know, you never know. <laughs> you, you know what happens? You have to say the driver's name is Steve. Like, whenever they got to the garage and everything calmed down, it's like, Steve, how are you going to hit me, man? Correct. Like, you're not going to hit one of the fans. You're going right. to hit me. Like, I'm trying to help you get forward, Steve. Come on. That's how it was leaving Detroit public school road games. But the difference was the crowd wasn't happy. No. They would tip over your bus in a minute. It's got to be hard to tip over a bus. Let's move on. For the first time since Nielsen started measuring music consumption in the United States, rock is no longer the top genre in the U.S. It's been replaced by R&B and hip-hop. My question for you, has hip-hop sold out? Not at all. I've talked about this topic for as long as I remember falling in love with hip hop. The message did it to me. When I saw broken glass everywhere, I was like, I'm hooked. <laughs> for me, it was children's story. Yes. By and so people in particular 
corporate America has always been what I call culture vultures for rap music and the hip hop genre which KRS-One clearly eloquate, elocutes, is not just rapping into elocutes? a mic. Elocutes, eloquates, whatever the word is. Whatever it is. Rap it into a microphone, breakdance, graffiti, how you dress, how you speak. And so a lot of times people just say hip hop when really they're referring to rap, which in a lot of different ways are two different things, though they represent the same Topic. Well elocuted. But when you watch products being placed in commercials, in sports, in entertainment, there have always been people that have tried to use hip hop, but not truly give it its credit. To the point where you remember when artists like Run DMC were doing songs with Aerosmith to trying to help the popularity of hip hop and rap music. So now it's come full circle. To where it's the other way around. Exactly. Now, now the, the rock acts are trying to glom on to the hip-hop groups to, you know, become bigger. But it's one of those things where it's like the same reason I root against the Warriors. It's like when you are in the number one spot, it's, there's not there, you lose a little bit of cool factor. You lose a little edge. Like, hip-hop does lose a little bit of edge when it is, like, the number one music genre. It's bigger than hip-hop. There's new Nike jerseys. They're... They dry faster. There's all these performance things about them. But this I found really interesting and I absolutely love. The home team no longer has to wear white. They're saying you can wear you can wear colors. There can be a blue team against a red team. Kind of like they do at Christmas. I love this. They do this a lot in soccer internationally. This to me is the evolution of uniforms. I think that the, the football is going to pick up on this. Hockey is going to pick up on this. And baseball is going to pick up on this. Do you support this as strongly as I do? I do support it. And also, it's more jerseys to be sold. Mm -hmm. That's really what this is all about. When yeah. the, the home team is wearing white and the road team is wearing a dark color, it's really only pigeonholing you into being able to sell two jerseys. And no one's ever said, oh, I can't tell the difference between these teams. One's blue and one's, <laughs> and one's green. I can't tell. This is too complicated. It doesn't work like that. Like shirts and skins. It doesn't work like that. No one plays shirts and skins anymore. You notice that? But think about no it. No one plays shirts and skins here's anymore. Here's why I draw that I parallel. Think that's just because we're old. No, here's why I draw that parallel. Think about it. If you're playing with a diverse group of individuals and you play shirts and skins, everybody has a different color. I don't see race. Leak I didn't sources. say see race. I Leak said color. sources. I've told ESPN that Manu Ginobili is returning to play for the Spurs. What does that tell you? They just got older. <laughs> Do you think the Spurs are happy about this? <laughs> <laughs> the Spurs are like, you want a coach, right? You, 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 we got a coaching spot for you. Give me that Tim Duncan role. I give him there. a lot of credit. I appreciated the way he played in last year's playoffs. He did show that he still could be a productive rotation player given the situation. But if they're going to maintain the elite level of competing and winning 60 games, I still think they have another chess move to make. Magic Johnson said, if Lonzo can get triple doubles in Summer League, then Lonzo can get triple doubles in the league. Do you believe that? He didn't put a number on it. Sure. If you could get, get one, one triple yeah, double get one. in some of these. Julius Randle got one last year. How about this? I <laughs> have a, I got a triple <laughs> double. How'd you get that many rebounds? I don't rebound. You know what happened? You probably got six rebounds and you were like, I could probably get a triple yeah, double today. Let me get ten rebounds yeah, real quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just looked up, and you're like, I got six, like only four more. <laughs> hey, hey teammates, hey teammates. <laughs> let me get these boards. I found this interesting, Jalen. Rob Palenka, your former teammate and now general manager of the Lakers said that agent Rich Paul reached out and contacted him noticing how patient the Lakers were with their cap space and said let's talk now it wasn't about LeBron James it was about Contavious Caldwell Pope who then signed with the Lakers but the fact that Rich Paul's getting on the phone and calling Rob Palenka the general manager of the Lakers makes me take it a step further and you know where I'm going to take it where am I taking it let me see. There's another domino that may be a part of this equation named uh, LeBron James. LeBron James! So we've got a relationship between the general manager of the Lakers and Rich Paul, close friend, confidant, and agent of LeBron James. And here's also a business way to look at it. Let's just make it about KCP for a minute, mm -hmm. who you know I'm a fan of. 
You get on the phone with the Los Angeles Lakers when you realize the Pistons just acquired Avery Bradley and they renounced his rights. Mm -hmm. So now you go from trying to get a long-term deal with the team that drafted you to going to Los Angeles and taking a one-year $18 million deal understanding that they're a team that's only taking players for one, one year, year because so they can have a blank canvas. And I love this. I'm going to read way too much into this. I love the fact that Rich Paul noticed how careful they were being with cap space. Hmm. <laughs> Just called up and was like, I see how careful you're being with your cap space. I see your moves and I see what you're doing. Let's talk. We all know that this is about Contavious Caldwell Pope, but it's really about LeBron James potentially wearing the purple and gold. This is one of those topics I could talk to you for an hour about. John Cena said that every day he spends 30 to 60 minutes shaving and manscaping everything from the ears down. What? He got too much time on his hands. 30 to 60 minutes? Two, a lot of people think I'm lying when I say this. I don't shave. Jalen Rose has never put a razor to his own face in his entire life. I can't grow a beard. But that doesn't mean you can't shape up your own goatee. Like, I feel like this is a skill that you should have. No, it literally grows like this. That, so, let me see. Turn your... It's still, you look a little homeless today. You don't You don't look as rich as you are today. You, need, you don't care about our show. Because I know after this show, you're going to go get a haircut for a bigger show. You used to care about this show. But 30 to 60 minutes this man spends. Like, that's more time than my wife spends getting ready. Like, this is ridiculous. That, How could that possibly be a part of your daily routine, 30 to 60 minutes of manscaping? That's more time than Thelma on good time spent in the bathroom. That, that is more time than you have ever spent preparing for this program. <laughs> Patrick Beverly was being introduced by the Clippers. He said this, quote, I'm not Chris Paul. I'm not Chris Paul. I'm not Chris Paul. But saying that... He's not me either. Take us behind the curtain. I'm a professional basketball player, and I get played to run up and down the court. And I pulled myself from being an international prospect to possibly being on the road to being a journeyman to finding a home and staying power in Houston as a defensive player that gives effort, energy, and tenacity, an improved three-point shooter, not your prototypical point guard score first as you see with most teams in the league he is the kind of guy that can be an irritant which is why mm -hmm. he's on your roster and Chris Paul is the ultimate floor general so they're two total different players and prospects and I see where he was going he basically said I can't play offense as well as Chris Paul Chris Paul can't play defense as well as I can and he and Doc Rivers both represent shot time next very troubling news. Scientists have discovered, analyzing bones and using computers and smart people things, that the Tyrannosaurus Rex did not have the ability to run. They just kind of walked around all the time. What? Does that ruin the Tyrannosaurus Rex for you? It doesn't, because if I recall correctly, it would be hard to run because their arms are so short. Jalen. They don't have balance. Jalen, Jalen. Oh, that's a dinosaur. Jalen. Jalen, you know you don't run with your arms, right? You run with your legs. You When the last time you run? I don't run that fast or that often. Okay. They are in concert. You know I don't like concerts. <laughs> what? Meek Mill. Meek Millie! I love Meek Mill. Me Meek Mill is underrated. Bars! Meek Mill titled his next album... Wins and losses. When asked about it, he said, quote, I'm talking about losing a drink. No, 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 no. He said, quote, I just wanted to give people a real perspective of my life, what we call wins and what we call losses. When you just lost a battle to Drake, is it smart to title your next album Wins and Losses? It is. What? Look at it like this. In sports, we don't look at it any type of way when Michael Jordan loses a game or Magic Johnson. They don't no, go undefeated. Everybody takes L's. You always take L's. Jay-Z is probably the greatest to ever do it, but he took an L to Nas. And to Beyonce. And so, oh, you think Lemonade is better than 444? Yes. What? What? It is. What? You know it is. How about this? How about people actually believing the fact that they're airing their dirty laundry? Hey, people. Oh, I think they are, but it's, it's strategic. It's very strategic. They got together and they're like, okay, now that we've made up, let's make some money off of this. 
When Lemonade came out, there were people roaming the face of this earth thinking that she was actually about to leave her husband. No, no, no. Because the songs were so intimate and people took them so personal. Can I say something that's going to make you upset? Me and you sat in front of microphones and said, all he's going to do is now do a response. response. Can, I, can I say something that's going to make you upset? Sure. Jay-Z's album's kind of soft. What? It's kind of soft. The beats are kind of soft. What? The beats the are kind of soft. Hit the brakes. No, Hit the brakes. No, you, no, no you taking shots no, at Jay's on. album. I'm moving on. You taking I'm shots on. at Tupac. I'm moving on. You taking shots I'm at Tribe on. Called Quest. That's what I do. I'm a negative person. I'm just speaking how this I feel. This slander will not be tolerated. Not everybody can be Redman. You know what I mean? Next. There's video at UCLA. Remember those runs you used to run in UCLA back when you used to be good at basketball? You know, those UCLA pickup runs? The last runs? summer I officially was a part <laughs> of the run <laughs> was Russell Westbrook's first or second year because I remember being like, yo, let me be your KD for the summer. <laughs> Young fella, just give me the rock. You know what I mean? Well, those days have passed you by, but they're still happening. Of course they are. I got to go represent. Melo Anthony and Kyrie Irving were on the same team playing pickup at UCLA. Just... Getting buckets. And here's my question about it, though. Carmelo Anthony's wearing a hoodie while he plays ball. What? Now we've seen multiple instances in which Carmelo Anthony wears a hoodie while he works out. He plays he plays with the hoodie on sometimes, plays with the hoodie off sometimes. Why in the world is Carmelo Anthony playing with a hoodie? So he doesn't catch a hair cold. That's a ridiculous answer. And if you look at the gear that is now being issued to teams... They have the cut-off shirts, the sleeveless shirts, and a lot of them have hoods on them. Do you know why they have hoods on them? Because LeBron called, and he was like, I need something that doesn't show my hair. I need something that doesn't show my hair. <laughs> PMD said it. Keep your hood, hoodie on and your boots late. The very first recording, I started the show, and then you just started screaming, got to give the people what they want, for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Since then, we've turned into our mantra and our philosophy. The part of giving the people what they want is asking the people what they want us to do. So we open up our Twitter feed. We open up our Reddit, our subreddit. You go to reddit.com, search Jalen Jacoby. We've got a subreddit, very active in there. And if you call 98580-Jalen, you can leave us a voicemail. We like to interact with the people and give what they want. First question that we have is from Yovan. He wants to know, where will Dwayne Wade play next season? Won't he get 20 plus million dollars to play for the Bulls? I think he means like next season after this year with the Bulls. The Banana Bowl boys are going to try to do what they can to have as many of them on the same All roster. All four of them are free agents next season if they don't sign extension. It's almost like this. It's almost like either you play the Kentucky or you remember the Banana Bowl boys. Here's what I love about the Banana Bowl brothers is they fill their gonna, rosters. They're going to get on a text and be like, one of us has to take a very small deal. And they're going to look, everyone's going to look over at Dwayne Wade like, <laughs> <laughs> and they're all going to look at each other and they're all going to look at Dwayne like, Dwayne, you know that deal, right? <laughs> Thanks so much, Yovan, for writing in. The next question we have is from Nathan. Would Jalen watch Game of Thrones if some of his favorite musicians started making cameos like Ed Sheeran made a cameo the first episode this year. Do you, know who Ed, do you know who Ed Sheeran is? He's an artist. Okay, that's fair, I guess. You're not wrong. He is an artist. Would you watch if Jay-Z was on Game of Thrones? I would. You would? So all we have to do is get Jay-Z on Game That's all it's going to take? After I've told you time and time again what a great show this is, all it takes is getting Jay-Z in there? What would it take for you to watch Power? I'm not watching Power. If you call 985-80-Jalen, you can leave his voicemails. <laughs> Someone will screen them. It's a nice pick family the best program. One, and then put them on the show just like this. What up, though? This is Blake. First of all, congratulations on being moved to a time slot where most of humanity is awake. And that is what actually leads me to my question. My dad is retired. He spends a lot of time watching TV, and he is dead set on a schedule where he watches certain shows at certain times in the afternoon. I want him to start watching Jalen and Jacoby. What is the best way to make a case to watch your show instead of one of his shows, which is probably Dr. Phil or some other type of show that is not worth watching? Thanks, guys. We got to get Blake's dad to watch the show. We do. And here's the thing is we can relate to Blake's dad because you're also retired. <laughs> you know? And you also spend your day watching television. I do. So there you go. It's a, we, you know, is we don't like to work very hard. We don't like to prepare very much. We like to watch a lot of television. We're just like Blake's dad, basically. How about this? What is he interested in? That's the hook. 
Is it Does a like team? Statues? Is it pop culture? Is it current events? We give all of that here. Is it Dale music? And is and it what, movies? I do want to make one correction for Blake. Is, is it don't, gossip? They only put us on in the afternoon for four weeks. You know, so it's not <laughs> congratulate us on this new time. We'll be back in the middle of the night before you even know it. Thanks so much for the call, Blake Griffin. I thought it was Blake Griffin, right? No. It wasn't? Was that Drake? Did you say Drake? Is that no. Drake's dad? <laughs> Drake's dad? Is it one of the ones, JJ? <laughs> Next, we have from Twitter. This is from the cerebral assassin. He always he always hits this up. Shout out to this guy, Jalen. If you if you were to see Tony Romo in public and he tried talking to you, would you tell him to keep it moving? Absolutely not. Why is it that every time Tony Romo comes up, you don't want to talk about it? It's not about him. It's about forced football topics, and the national media thinks that people care about cowboy news in the off season. Unless it's Ezekiel Elliott in the wrong place at the wrong time, we're not going to do that on this program. We are going to talk about football when it's appropriate, when the fantasy draft comes up. When, 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 we, <laughs> when we start having to study for our fantasy, that's definitely what's going to happen. We have one more voicemail. Shout out to Reggie, TJ from Orlando, Florida. In light of Kaepernick still not having a team, what do you think his next career move should be? Should he just be an activist or try to run for some kind of public office? Give the people what they want, signing out. Peace. Really appreciate the call, but I want to say this. Colin Kaepernick will play for an NFL team this season. He doesn't have to worry about being an activist or running for office. Like His football career is not over. He is too good of a quarterback for him not to put on a uniform this season. How about Johnny Manziel is allegedly intriguing some NFL execs about his potential? I don't believe that, though. But Colin Kaepernick can't get a phone call? I don't believe that for a second. Well, and I always... love Michael Vick. Come on, but Mike. Michael. Come on, Mike. He'll learn. Mike. He'll learn. Mike. Vick. Vick. I have to say that we will always record exclusive content for the people that we respect and appreciate the most that take in Jalen Jacoby, the podcast listeners. From the trunk.